The unit circle chart has a horizontal axis called the x-axis and the vertical axis called the y-axis. The unit circle is a circle with the center at the origin of the rectangular coordinate system and the radius of this circle is 1. This means that the distance from the center to any point on the circle is equal to 1. The x and the y axis splits the entire plane into four quadrants and here we have quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. The unit circle shows a total of 16 angles and these angles are given in both degrees and radians. Also, all these angles are angles in standard position and this means that the vertex of each angle is at the center and the initial side is along the positive x-axis. Notice that all the angles we have here are positive angles, but we can have a unit circle that contains negative angles. The positive angles are generated by a counterclockwise rotation, and this means that for each angle we start at the positive x-axis and we move counterclockwise. Now let's take a look at the angles we have here in degrees. We know that one complete rotation will measure 360 degrees. Then half of a rotation is 180 degrees and one fourth of a rotation is 90 degrees. In quadrant 1 we have the angles between 0 and 90 degrees and these are 30, 45 and 60 degrees. In quadrant 2 we have the angles between 90 and 180 degrees and these are 120, 135 and 150 degrees. In quadrant 3 the angles between 180 and 270 degrees are 210, 225 and 240 and in quadrant 4 the angles between 270 and 360 degrees are 300, 315 and 330. These are special angles in trigonometry and of course we can draw unit circles that have less or more angles. Now all these angles are also given in radians. If one full rotation in degrees is 360 degrees, then in radians that is 2 pi radians. And here on the unit circle next to 360 degrees we see 2 pi. We know that pi is approximately 3.14 and 2 times 3.14 is 6.28. This number tells us how many times the radius fits into the circumference. Now, if 360 degrees is the same as 2 pi, and we divide both sides of this equation by 2, then we will get that 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. We also see this on the unit circle, that 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. Now, if we divide this equation by 2 again, then we will get that 90 degrees is the same as pi over 2. And here on the circle, indeed, we see that 90 degrees is the same as pi over 2. So, as you see, we get all these fractions by dividing 2 pi into smaller angles. If we just take a look at quadrant 1, then here 30 degrees is the same as pi over 6 radians, 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians, and 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians. Now, for each of the angles on the unit circle, we have corresponding points, and each of these points is given by the x and the y coordinates. For the angle of 0 degrees, the corresponding point is 1, 0. Recall that the unit circle has the radius 1, therefore the x-coordinate of this point is 1 and the y-coordinate is 0. For the 90 degree angle, the point is 0, 1. For 180 degrees, negative 1 and 0. And for 270, we have 0 and negative 1. For the rest of the points, the coordinates represent fractions. Also, notice that in quadrant 1, all the coordinates are positive. In quadrant 2, x is negative and y is positive. 
In quadrant 3, both x and y are negative, and in quadrant 4, x is positive and y is negative. If the point that corresponds to the angle of 30 degrees has the coordinates square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half, then right across to the left we will have the point negative square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. And if the next point that corresponds to 45 degrees has the coordinates square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2, then to the left we will see the point with the coordinates negative square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. So notice that these fractions will repeat in each quadrant. Now to make sense of these coordinates, from one of these points we will draw a perpendicular to the x-axis. So here we have a perpendicular from this point and what we have here is a right triangle with an acute angle of 60 degrees and the hypotenuse of this triangle is 1 because the radius of this circle is 1. In this triangle the bottom side is 1 half and the right side is square root of 3 over 2. As you see I take these values from the coordinates of the point and for this point the x coordinate is 1 half and the y coordinate is square root of 3 over 2. Then if I apply the Pythagorean theorem then this side squared plus this side squared has to be the hypotenuse squared. This means that 1 half squared plus square root of 3 over 2 squared has to be equal to 1 squared. Let's see if this is true. 1 half squared is 1 over 4 plus square root of 3 squared is 3 and 2 squared is 4 and on the right side we will have 1. And now on the left side 1 over 4 plus 3 over 4 is indeed equal to 1. The same will happen with each of the coordinates on the unit circle. Each time we will apply the Pythagorean theorem we will get 1. Now let's take a look at the following circle. So here we have a circle and on this circle we have a point with the coordinates x and y. This point corresponds to the angle theta and if we draw a perpendicular to the x-axis then we get this right triangle with the bottom side x and the right side y. And because this is a unit circle the hypotenuse of this triangle is 1. Now let's use this triangle to define the trigonometric functions sine, cosine and tangent. We know that by definition sine of angle theta is the opposite side divided by hypotenuse which is y divided by 1. So sine of angle theta equals y divided by 1 which is just y. Cosine of angle theta is the adjacent side divided by hypotenuse and x divided by 1 is x. So cosine of angle theta equals x. So what we see here is that the y coordinate of a point represents the value of sine at angle theta and the x coordinate of the point represents the value of cosine of this angle. So if we come back to this unit circle then we can tell that each x coordinate represents the value of cosine of each angle and each y coordinate represents the value of sine. So again the first coordinate of each point represents cosine and the second coordinate represents sine. So let's say we want to find sine of 60 degrees. Then on the unit circle we locate the angle of 60 degrees and we go and read the second coordinate. That is square root of 3 over 2. So we can say that sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. Now let's find cosine of 2 pi over 3. This angle is in quadrant 2 and is equivalent to 120 degrees and the value of cosine is negative 1 half. 
So then cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. Now let's find the value of sine of 270 degrees. On the unit circle 270 degrees is on the negative y axis and the value of sine here is negative 1. So then sine of 270 degrees is negative 1. So again to find the value of cosine of an angle on the unit circle we read the x coordinate of the corresponding point and to find the value of sine we read the y coordinate. And notice that depending on the quadrant, the values of sine or cosine can be positive or negative. Now from the unit circle to the right, we can also define the tangent function and we know that tangent of an angle theta is the opposite side y divided by the adjacent side x. So we can write that tangent of angle theta equals y divided by x. So if we want to find the value of tangent of a certain angle using the unit circle then we need to divide the y coordinate by the x coordinate. For example if we want to find tangent of 60 degrees then we need to divide square root of 3 over 2 by 1 half. Then the value of the tangent function will be square root of 3. And if we want to find tangent of 90 degrees, then we need to divide 1 by 0. In this case, the tangent is undefined. Now, you see how the unit circle is an important tool to find the values of sine, cosine, and tangent of special angles. Therefore, it's important to have all these values memorized and let's see if there is an easy way to do it. Notice that in all the fractions, the denominator has the value of 2. The numerators have square roots in them and we can even write this 1 as square root of 1. Then notice that if we look at the x coordinates of these points, then in the numerator under the square root we have 1, 2, and 3. So again, moving clockwise, we have 1, 2, and 3. With the y coordinates, the pattern repeats if we move counterclockwise. Here we have 1, and then 2, and then 3. Here is also another way of comparing the values of 1 half square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 3 over 2. Out of these three numbers, 1 half is the smallest, then square root of 2 over 2 is the next one, and the largest one is square root of 3 over 2. On the unit circle, this is 1 half, this is square root of 2 over 2, and this is square root of 3 over 2. As you see here in quadrant 1, as the angle increases, the value of sine also increases. But also notice that in this quadrant 1, as the angle increases, the value of cosine decreases. So here cosine is 1, and then square root of 3 over 2, and then square root of 2 over 2, and then 1 half, and then 0. Now here we will be done with this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, leave a comment and thank you for watching.